Okay, that's what we're doing first before we do this interview. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Let's finish the interview first now. Uh, Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. I still day here with Tona, and I believe Tona still day with me because uh, for those who are not there with me from the beginning, I want to appreciate you, and uh, we say thank you for still staying with us uh, to this part of the show. We just finished one better conversation on top tech matters, and we talked to Adekunle Kunle Hazan, uh, the CEO of uh, Summitech, uh, regarding the tech space and how uh, the pandemic don't change a lot of things, and how the moving forward will be for people who will like day on top that level. So we do move on to another conversation, as I promised Tona. I get to better conversations today and the second one now with uh, Ayomide Ola Tubosun, a writer and we're going to be discussing poetry yes and uh, a lot of people know to say that one a better art so uh, Tubosun how are you doing today very fine very fine good morning nice nice to have you nice to have you okay so let's even talk about um, um, uh, how we do every as a tradition on the show we get to ask our guests how they are because there's a pandemic and a lot of things have changed so how are you honestly Give me your honest response. How are you? Uh, not too fine. But I'm fine a little. I'm fine a little. The pandemic has helped me um, improve on my writing. You know, when you're alone, you get to meditate and be able to write some good stuff. So it's been, it's been a bit good. Okay. So, like, uh, I will pick up on what you said. You said the pandemic helped you improve in your writing. So uh, it's safe to say that uh, writers like to be alone. Is that true? People say that, that writers like to be alone. So that they can think. Is that your case? Yeah, that's my case. Do you that's always case. have to be alone to get inspiration to write? Yes, because you get uh, as a writer, what you see, you write, you write based on what you see and what you think about. So when you finish thinking about something and you decided to put it down, and maybe after some time you see another thing, you get distracted. So being alone is something paramount for a writer. Okay, so I, I gather that uh, you're a student of uh, Obafemi Awolowo University in Leife, and uh, because yeah. of the pandemic now, a lot of things have, uh, learning has been altered. So how has that affected you in your learning space? Um, I'm a student of English language. Okay. So I would say it, uh, it hasn't really affected me negatively because I write, so it, it has improved on my writing skills as, as a student of that kind of course. The pandemic has helped me write, so it has improved on that skill, which has, which will also help my academic um, betterment when the school finally resumes. Mm. So for you, writing is a passion and uh, not just a hobby, or how is writing for you? Why did you decide to go into writing as a student? It's a passion. It's, it's a, a passion. passion. It's not just a hobby. I, 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 can, I can write all year long if it's possible, because it's something I, I really enjoy doing. It's something that... I, I think that that's that's, the, that's when 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 someone, when someone talks about me, that's the main thing. That's something I I really wish to focus on in the future. Even if I might have another career beside it, but it's, writing is something that is very very paramount about me. Hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about your book. Uh, I believe you have a book that you've written because every writer needs to have like a, a proof of what they've done. So let's talk about your book. It's titled Blackberry, right? Yeah, it's not Blackberry, okay. though. It's Black Abyss. Black Bla okay, so tell us about the title. Okay, um, I came about it. Okay. I came about the title. Um, uh, the book is an African poetry collection, and I came about the title after I looked for several titles 
but I, I only had the option to, I only had the option to pick something African. Okay. I only had the option to pick something African. So I thought of an African title, but I couldn't find any. And I'm someone that loves to, um, listening to music a lot. Mm -hmm. So there was this particular day, on the final day after I finished compiling the poetry collection, I listened to two tracks like um, Kendrick Lamar's songs and Santander. So I, I noticed the particular line in those two tracks and that says the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And that track is something that most people used to express the African culture, mm -hmm. the, the beauty that comes with the African culture. Mm -hmm. And then that's how the title of the poetry collection um, came to me. Hmm. So it was, you it, it were inspired by the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Hmm, interesting. Yes, yes. So now speaking about poetry and uh, putting it into a collection now, how, uh, what, what would you say inspired the, the, the kind of poetries you, you, you put together to inform that book? Were they all personal experiences? Did you get experiences from people? What, what inspired these, uh, these poems you put together? Okay, um, some of the poems in that, the oldest poems in the collection were written in 2017. I started writing some of those poems in 2017, and I didn't. I purposely decided not to come up with a collection that time because I wanted to have some experiences later in life. So I waited for some years so I'll get to have those experiences and I'll be able to put them down. Because mm -hmm. sometimes writing is not so easy to pick, especially when it's poetry. It's very deep, so you have to look for something that 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 looks real, something that relates to your environment. So when a reader reads it, that person will also feel that. What the person is facing is being talked about in the collection. So um, what really inspired the poem was um, my personal experiences and um, things that I see around me. Sometimes I feel, I feel that, okay, I really want to achieve this thing in life and it's not really coming by. It's not really coming by. Then I'll just go alone and write about it and try to prefer solutions to that, that situation in the poem. So those kind of poems, are, I brought most of them together and put them in the collection. Interesting. So I, I, I can say that a lot of these uh, poems are experiences that you've lived. Uh, well, yeah. and the funny thing is that a lot of people say that uh, poems or poets in Nigeria, uh, uh, poets in Nigeria are really not, you know, uh, it's not a really lucrative career. And seeing that Nigerians really, some people don't really understand it. Some people don't really understand it. It's not celebrated. You come out and speak English in different ways, and Nigeria, yeah, 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 they speak English. We understand them, but you know, they really they connect like that. So, uh, how would you say the the uh, the the Nigerian society can get to, you know, welcome poetry as a career, or what would you think? What would you say are the things that Nigerians need to do to get to you know accept poetry as a career? Because right now. It's still not as you know accepted as it should be in Nigeria. What do you think about? Okay, um, I'm going to start with saying um, I used I used to write songs in secondary school. I used to write songs in secondary school, and then later I realized that my voice wasn't good enough to sing those to songs. Sing the songs. And then I thought of it. Yeah, and then I thought of it. Uh, I need I need something similar to this to music, something that is similar to music, but it doesn't really need that voice. So I decided to go into poetry. And I was very, I was very young at that time, and um, I, I realized that poetry is not something that really needs, that really need to understand English to write. Poetry can be written in any language. If you don't, if you are an illiterate, you can write poetry. You can write poems. You can, you can even make use of um, that language you are really familiar with. You can make use of pidgin. Now, most people, um, most people believe that um, you really have to understand big grammars for you to be able to compose a poem no exactly no it's not something it's not something that difficult and um poetry as a career in nigeria is uh not so visible as i would say but um people need to realize that not everyone can become a musician and most young people fail to think about the fact that the um they are good at writing songs but when they perform them, the, song, the, song, the songs don't really become popular because they are not really good at singing them. Yeah. Why not try to put that um, lyrics together and compose it like a poem? Uh, that's way, that's kind of career you're trying to choose in music. You can also pursue that, that career in, um, in poetry. You can also pursue that career in poetry, hmm. yeah. Interesting. So uh, for people who know that they don't have the voice to sing their words, they can put it in a poem and actually recite it. 
Is that what you're saying? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, that's what that so being uh, as 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 it is it's quite uh, interesting to know that uh, you decided to put this up as uh, a part of or a career path. But being a student and uh, doing poetry, how is, how have you been able to you know you know juggle both at the same time and be successful at both of them? Uh, it's not been quite quite easy. It's not been quite easy. You know, you have, you have to, you have, I have to face my studies as long as trying to pursue a hobby. Because I realized that when someone has a talent to do something and maybe you neglect it over a period of time, um, that talent tends to fade away. Mm. You don't, later you realize that you are not so good as you were in that particular field. So it's not been quite easy. And that's why uh, I would say that this pandemic is what also helped me publish this book. Because if I, if I, if I, Never came home from school and everyone was busy going along with the daily activities. Uh, I don't think I would really have the time to 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 publish the book. So I would say it's it's not quite easy. It's not quite easy. It's something that uh, I really find hard to manage. But since um, due to the course I'm studying, it's uh, it's quite similar. Yeah. So I try to put the two together. I try to I try to put the two together. So do you have any uh, poems written in uh, any other dialect besides English, any other languages, or just uh, all English? Okay, I, I once wrote a poem in Yoruba. Hmm. But um, the thing is, that's, that kind of poem is not really advisable to publish like that because most people expect it to be in English language. Although some, some, sometimes you come, I want to break the odds and uh, maybe come up with a pigeon poetry collection or or Yoruba poetry collection. Uh, so in, in some of the poems in that collection, Yoruba words are there. I even have about I even have a poem that the title is Aduke, which is a Yoruba name. And yeah. some other poems I try to talk about things like my mom is telling me a story. I in Yoruba, when you're talking about your mom, you say mommy. Mommy. So in that, yeah, in that in, in those in that poem or in those poems, I I didn't change the language to say my mother once told me. I said, Mommy once told me. Okay. So um, I try to insert that culture because most people want to embrace that English language culture. So it's not so easy to just come up with something very rare in another language, although I'll do that someday. But so I try to put that language in, in the English poems. Interesting. All right. So uh, before you leave us, Ayamide, you're going to be give, doing a poem for us. All right. You're going to be doing a poem for us. Okay. Uh, it can be anything short, anything short, anything, you know, just you're going to do a poem for us. You know, so if you can do one in any language you want or you want to do in English, it's your choice, right? It's your choice. So you're going to do a poem for us and uh, just lead us through it. Where if you're ready, we're ready for you. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Um, the poem is in English language and it's titled Upper Side. Okay, go Upper ahead. Upper Side. Yeah. So, um... I bled out my heart. When an apart held, when the day killed the night, and stole its shadows, and its stars, and its moon, and on heard its lampoon, I wept out my eyes. When an apart held, when the white lines on a zebra chased out the black stripes, and the zebra became a plain white ram, and it was slaughtered, and blood was shed, and humanity died. I drummed out my years when an apart held, when rice refused to be boiled, boiled by charcoal because it was black, and then the rice whitened off, and the charcoal blackened the way, and humanity was left hungry in its sway. I bled out my heart, I wept out my eyes, I drummed out my years when an apart held. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yes, I would. I would say that was uh, that was quite intense. That was that Thank was you. quite intense. That was quite intense. Okay. So uh, for for the regular guy, what was that poem trying to um, to say in one sentence? What were you speaking about okay. in one sentence? You said it's titled "Appetite," right? Yeah. So in one sentence, so what was that poem trying to say? Okay, the poem talks about um, racial discrimination and the effects that it could bring to humanity. Hmm. Interesting. Racial discrimination and the effect it has on humanity. That's very, very deep. Uh, do you have any other one that is more socially, you know, something really calm? 
on a lighter note. Uh, Is there any, do you write poems like that on a lighter note? Something that people can just mm -hmm. read? I write poems like that, but I don't really have them here now. Okay, you don't have anyone here. Okay, because uh, a lot of people say that if you're a poet, you have to have all these things at the top of your head when they ask you. Say, speak on water. You say, water, water, water away. Water coming from the flows of the rivers. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay, I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can do one now if you want. Okay, oh yeah, okay, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Um, you say Nigeria, Nigeria. Nigeria is my area. Now when you say we are 20, we are 19, yeah. But it doesn't mean that one person can promote unity and disturb the insecurity of thousands of people that die within one year. You say Nigeria, Nigeria. Nigeria is my area. Mm. If you don't know, ask my mother, ask my father. Try to kill your sisters, rape their fathers. But now you have to realize that these people are born and bred to try to produce daughters. How do you want to provide for their insecurity? How do you want to provide for humanity? How do you want to take care of their sanity when you try, when you try to disturb their livelihood? Nigeria, Nigeria, that is our area. <laughs> I like that. That was that was really nice. That was really nice. That was really nice. That was interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm amazing. Amazing that you could come up with such uh, intelligent uh, conversations via your poems. And so far, it's good that you, like you said, you're, you're expressing your, your 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 feelings and the things that you 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 experience through your poems, and it's good. So. Um, as it is right now, for young uh, poets like yourself, who would want to, or for someone who wants to, you know, get into poetry like yourself, uh, what uh, would you say are those key things that they need to do tonight so that they can, you know, um, get involved? Okay, um, I would say you really need to understand um, the language, the language that matters to you. You really need to understand yourself better, understand your environment, and when you're writing poems, try to make sure that it's a it possesses a kind of storytelling point of view. So it, 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 so it doesn't just chase away the reader and it tries to invite them into what you're talking about. And it has a storytelling point of view and people will really enjoy your poetry. Hmm. So you must have the element of storytelling. Yeah. Element of storytelling. Okay. Thank you very, very, very much for this uh, very enlightening session on poetry. And I believe that maybe one of these days I'll try and write something. I'll think about it because I think I know how to write too. I'm not just sure, but maybe I will find it. I will find it. So, but but do you, do you agree that uh, you can be uh, you can learn how to do poetry, or are you always born with the flair of you know doing poetry? Can I can I learn it if I just want to wake up one day and say I want to do poetry? Um, I I didn't learn how to write poems, but. I think some people, some people can actually learn. There's nothing that can be learned that can be learned. And as far as it's so much talent, it's also something that another person works to try to possess. So um, it can be learned. It can be learned. I also um, permit me to say this. Permit me to say this. And you can also um, check out my book. And it's on various online stores and okay. Amazon and so many platforms. Amazon, Okada Books, and so many bookstores. Blackberries is a poetry collection. That your social media. Uh, my social media handle. Okay. On Twitter, it's um, that poem boy. Now, the boy ends with two Ys. That poem boy all together. Then on um, Instagram, is Ayomidi underscore or Latibos on one. Okay, so guys, go check him out. Uh, he's the young poet, and he's going to give you, he's going to blow your mind. He has an amazing book, uh, a collection of poetry, and you, you need to see that. Go and check it out. Uh, thank you very much, Ayomide Olatubosu, for this conversation. It's and you have good. inspired me to go back to the drawing board and see if I can write poems. Hmm. I will come back and shock them. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for that conversation. All right. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.